will always remember 2006 as the year when social media was really starting to take off. I don't view that date as a good or a bad thing. I view it as the beginning of information really starting to ramp up. It was no longer TV reporters or personalities providing or promoting information. We all became reporters and personalities as more major social media platforms started to rise. Fast forward to today and you can see what it is now. More than ever do I see people pushing their ideas, programs, courses, conferences of how to become wealthy and successful. This is no surprise. They come and go in waves, but there is one wave that has continued to stick around all these years and is likely not going away ever, the New Age movement. They have been around since the 1970s and 80s, but it was 2006 that perfectly positioned the movement to be fueled by the launch of a particular book and movie. This launch would ride the social media wave and captivate millions of people into transforming their lives by manifesting their thoughts. That particular book and movie was called The Secret. Their so-called secret was this thing called the law of attraction. 17 years later, and it is anything but a secret. But what may be a secret is the many lives this law has ruined or even ended because of its dangerous addictive practices. One of those who bought into this law of attraction was John Clash. It sent him down a spiral that almost destroyed his life. To sum up in two senses what the law of attraction is, it's the idea that positive or negative thoughts will manifest into positive or negative experiences. It is a pseudoscience in which like energy will attract like energy that will overall improve one's health and personal relationships. John was a struggling rap artist in New York that went all in with this law of attraction. As an agnostic and borderline atheist, he wasn't sold on God or Jesus, but he was definitely sold on this law of attraction. But when he was invited to church, he found it to be fun and kept going. He eventually became a Christian, but not entirely realizing what he was getting involved in. What he did realize, though, was he needed to find the truth that would give him peace in his life. He searched for the truth by researching some of the major beliefs and movements out there. While he was still searching for that truth, he eventually discovered the counterfeit claims of the secret. This was the beginning of not only escaping the law of attraction, but warning others about it. John has now made it his mission to bring awareness and attention to people by publishing his first book, aptly titled Law of Attraction which shares how it is a gateway drug of spiritual heroin that leads to destruction. He breaks down some of the false deceptions of the secret movement. He deconstructs its claims down to a vicious cycle of illogical practices that do not deliver and lead to not only innocent people losing their money, but even their life, all while making these false teachers rich. I remember one part of his book where he exposes the secret's deplorable tactic of connecting famous dead people to this law of attraction stuff by misrepresenting them. Some of these people were Plato, Shakespeare, Newton, Lincoln, and even Einstein. The truth is they never subscribe to it. It is deplorable enough to misrepresent them, but they take it a step further with Lincoln. They actually stole some quotes and falsely attributed them to Abraham Lincoln, who never even said those quotes to begin with. I personally find that cowardly because they're doing this to a dead person who has no ability to correct and deny those quotes. They go to these links to push their own agenda and sales. That is simply reprehensible. After reading this book, I discovered a fresh understanding about what a law actually is. You don't have to agree with me, but here's my take. I believe a law is a rule that is always enforced by an authority. For example, Newton's law of universal gravitation is a force that keeps us grounded and on Earth in a proper orbit. It is actually an incredibly important law as we need it to survive. Based on this law, as John points out, an apple that falls from the tree will 100% of the time have an authority, which is gravity, to enforce that apple downwards towards the ground. Now you can go against that law by sticking out your hand and catching the apple so it doesn't land on the ground, but the authority to enforce that downward motion, which again is gravity, will always exist, which means the law will still exist. This is the problem that the New Age movement has with the law of attraction. It's called a law, but it has no meaning because it is not enforced by any credible authority. You can say the law exists on paper, but it means nothing if there's no authority. They try to use science, but science is a tool that studies the physical world around us. 
They're trying to govern thoughts with science, but it is not an authority, which is completely the wrong thing. As John puts it simply, it's like trying to find wood with a metal detector. They hijack scientific words and change their meanings, such as quantum physics. They try to smuggle in fancy words or phrases such as our thoughts are made of energy with its own frequency as a way to explain their law. Just baseless deception with unfalsifiable claims. The laws are meant to govern the physical world we live in and the things we can see. However, this law of attraction is trying to govern non-physical, immaterial things we cannot see, which is our thoughts and feelings. This is not only illogical, it is impossible. You can't govern something you cannot see. This is just one of the many illogical fallacies John exposes in his book. John shares the similarity of Batman using a smoke bomb to distract, deceive, or to blind people enough to get away. In this case, these gurus use smoke bombs to get people to buy into this stuff with enough time to evade them and get away with it. They use enough smoke that many just accept things blindly without taking the time to do a bit of research or think logically for themselves. The thing about smoke is that with some effort and time, you can eventually see through it. I really enjoy John's writing style. Some of his jokes may go over some people's heads, but none of them went over mine. He has a great witty sense of humor and is not afraid to be transparent about the terrible things he has done in his life. He respects the reader and even respects their time in a way that he doesn't dive too deep into topics. He gives enough information for the reader to understand and do their own research. You can tell he did an incredible job researching his own work, and he teaches us all the value of reading everything in context and not just believing everything you read. Do I agree with everything he says? No. But those disagreements are so minor they don't affect the message he is trying to share. For example, on page 119, John shows how these law of attraction gurus always find a way to point the blame on you when you are not getting the reality you are trying to manifest. It turns into the psychological game they use against you. But then he compares it to being in a mentally abusive relationship with a manipulative spouse who always blames you for why the relationship isn't working. It's not that John is wrong to say that. I would have been more careful in my wording. The term mental abuse is a harsh generalization that has many meanings to it. I can agree with John in that these gurus play this psychological game. Are they deceptive? Yes. Can they be manipulative? Yes. Are they mentally abusive? I don't believe they are. They're trying to get rich off of people, not to emotionally abuse them. That is a very serious allegation. It falls under mental cruelty and bullying, which can be a criminal offense. It is a serious toxic relationship that can potentially result in a person ending up in prison. I don't believe these gurus go to that extreme. Not only would that expose their deception way too easily, but that's just not good business ending up in jail. I could grant that maybe a few are crazy to that degree, but to generalize them all like that is an inaccurate comparison. But at this point, I am just hyper-analyzing this minor disagreement to death now. Regardless, I care more about major disagreements, and really, I could not find any. John did teach me how understanding context is important when we read anything. For example, when he mentions the story of Adam and Eve, all this time I thought Eve was alone with the serpent when she ate the fruit while Adam was somewhere else. I thought that Eve ate from the fruit and then went off to find Adam either to bring him over to the tree or to bring that piece of fruit to him. But as John points out, many yeah. translations show that Adam was actually with her when she ate the fruit before he did the same. This really changed my way of thinking about this. His last chapter seems to be a bit out of place as it goes into apologetics. Now I enjoy reading apologetics, so in some respects this was great to read. But it no longer was talking about the law of attraction. I actually wanted John to talk more about it. However, I could see how the apologetics angle could connect the rest of his book as it described who the real Jesus is rather than the false Jesus the law of attraction tries to use. Could John have read more pages? I think so. I know he didn't want his book to be this large overwhelming read, which I can appreciate. But I think an extra 20 to 40 more pages would not have hurt, and it could have helped him round out his explanations and research more freely without feeling constrained. I wonder if he felt compressed as his actual written content came in at about 200 pages. I think one of the main takeaways I get from the Law of Attraction is that everything you want to accomplish in this life takes action, not attraction. It all takes work. 
There's no magic formula. There are no get rich quick schemes. There are no shortcuts. There are no energy positive thoughts. There are no secret strategies that will accomplish your goals. And there is certainly no law of attraction.